Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Friday, July the 20th, 2018. This is the day before the fight for the Cruiserweight Championship. Alexander Usyk against Murat Gassiev. Let's talk about it, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me lead with the bet I like. I like the plus 270, right? We're going to try to juice the odds here. The fight's going off at practically even money. I like the plus 270 on the under nine and a half rounds, right? Plus 270 hedged with Usyk simply to win the fight at even money, right? Understand you want to structure the bet so that you make a profit if either happens. In other words, you want to put a little bit more on Usyk simply to win, right? Because you're getting a plus 270 on the under nine and a half rounds. The logic I'm using is that Usyk is the fighter in Moscow. Right? Usyk's never fought in Moscow. Right? Um, an argument can be made. Moscow is more pro Gassiev than it is a Ukrainian fighter like Usyk. The argument I'm making here is if this fight goes the distance, Usyk is more likely to win the decision. Right? But if someone's going to get a knockout, in the first nine and a half rounds. And there is a chance that Gassia forces the issue. Either knocks out Usyk or gets knocked out. Then I want to be able to cash on that. Take advantage of the much greater than even money odds. But I need to have people understand the risk involved. If Gassiev wins this fight by stoppage after the midway point of the 10th round, right, full nine rounds plus half of the 10th, if he wins by stoppage after the midway point of the 10th round, or if he wins by decision in Moscow, you lose it all. Let's talk about my reasoning here. I'm going to make some hard statements Gambling requires hard opinions, right? You know, Usyk, in my opinion, is the fighter here with the higher ceiling. He's the guy who can fight your front foot or back foot. He has an advanced back foot game, folks. He's the guy who can come in high, try to take you out on headshots. Or he can bend at the waist and come in low. Right? His style is the style that's better suited for Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua. In other words, I believe if Usyk wins this fight, well, even if he loses this fight, if this 31-year-old decides to fight at heavyweight, I think he's one of the few guys who could clean out the existing title holders. I believe the Two guys who might give him problems would be Tyson Fury, who has the highest ceiling, in my opinion, in the heavyweight division. Right? Tyson Fury, who's still unbeaten. By the way, Usyk's unbeaten. Or Joseph Parker. Right? Usyk's fluid. He's big, folks. I know this is cruiserweight. He's 6'3". He's also a southpaw. Understand, if you're a clunky fighter, right, you're going to have an awfully hard time if you're trying to land a left jab against a southpaw. You're going to have to be bold. You're going to have to come across the top with some straight right hands. Exactly the punch that Joshua could not land against Joseph Parker. Just food for thought. Exactly the punch that Deontay Wilder takes a few rounds to get off against Luis Ortiz. <clears throat> now, Usyk has the higher ceiling. 
but he's fighting what I call a fastball pitcher. In other words, if we call fight styles languages, Usyk is the multilinguist, right? He's the guy who can speak multiple languages in the brain. Gassiev is the guy who has Mike Tyson's iron nickname and who is always coming forward on his front foot, right? His genius is that he's been able to shorten his punches and he's two-handed. He doesn't rely on a left, he doesn't rely on a right. He comes in, he's high energy, he's higher volume. He forces even sluggers onto their back foot. So that's Denis Lebedev on his back foot in their fight out of Moscow. That's Wildechik on his back foot. These are guys with big punches on his back foot against Murat Gassiev. Right? Gassiev is much more active than a Deontay Wilder or an Anthony Joshua. Right? Gassiev believes in his punching power. Let me just say this though. There's a big difference, huge, between Iron Mike Tyson and six foot two inch Iron Marat Gassiev, right? Mike Tyson, because he was shorter, because he swiveled at the waist, was hard to find in the ring. In other words, Tyson's on his front foot, Tyson's cat quick. He would make a move inside, you couldn't find him. Right? You were looking down. First, you had to do something down here. Right, You're looking down, and Tyson would pivot quickly. Much faster than Gassiev. Much smaller than Gassiev. Right? Gassiev is big. Gassiev is coming inside. Gassiev's body is a lot more exposed than Mike Tyson's body was. Gassiev can't get as low as Mike Tyson. Right? Gassiev throws a mean uppercut, but it doesn't come from as low down, nor is it as sudden as Mike Tyson's uppercut. Right? Now, you could deal with this, in my opinion, one of two ways. Let's continue to talk about Mike Tyson for a second. Right? You could either do it, we'll call it the Buster Douglas way. Right? He's coming in you have a jab to keep him outside, right? Buster Douglas is landing a jab on Tyson, right? This is Tyson not quite in his prime. I would argue Tyson had already started a decline at the point of the Buster Douglas fight. So Tyson's getting hit in the face as he comes inside, right? The predictability of Tyson not really having a back foot game is apparent. Douglas knows he's going to come inside. You remember Tyson's eye gets swollen up, right? Douglas also has an uppercut. You might remember Douglas hitting Tyson with the uppercut when Tyson goes down, right? The idea is I'm going to hit you with a jab. You get by the jab, I have something else back here for you. Could be an uppercut, could be a straight right hand depending on where Tyson tries to dodge the jab, right? And of course, when Tyson got way inside, Douglas would try to clinch him, right? You could do it the Buster Douglas way, or you could do it, we'll call it the Evander Holifield way, where Holifield comes in on Tyson, Right? Why does Tyson bite Holifield twice in the rematch? And let's remember, the bites are in the rematch. The first fight's a masterpiece that Holifield ends in the later rounds. Why is Tyson biting Holifield in the rematch? Because Tyson claimed that Holifield's head kept hitting him in the face. That Holifield was headbutting him. In other words, Holifield, rather than do a Buster Douglas, keep Tyson outside, Tyson comes inside, you make him pay, 
right? He gets too far inside, you smother him and hold him. Rather than do it that way, right? Think Ali Fraser, right? Fraser's coming in on his front foot. Ali does a lot of clinching in that second fight, doesn't he? Holds Fraser on the back of his head. When Fraser is outside, Ali is hitting him with jabs and combinations. Right? Rather than do it that way, Holofield, master fighter. Right? Master fighter. Elite fighter. Holofield has an arm bar. Right? Goodbye, Tyson's uppercut. Holofield bends down, gets low, comes up on Tyson's chest. Turns the fight into a fight at close quarters. Tyson didn't like that. Tyson wants to come forward and find you. Tyson wanted you backing away from him. Just like Gassiev does. He doesn't want you standing still and trading shots and being up on his chest. Now I'm just telling you that Alexander Usyk can fight either way. Right? He doesn't have to pick one. He can change styles during the fight. He can keep Gassiev guessing. Just understand, Gassiev fought Lebedev in Russia. And that fight went the distance. That fight was close. This is a fight where Gassiev drops Lebedev, right, off a left hand to the liver. Right? Lebedev gets off the canvas. You'll notice in the videos, Lebedev's on his back foot. I have the highlights somewhere in my favorites folder. Search for it. Lebedev is on his back foot in the fight. And the fight's close. It's a split decision win for Gassiev. It's the hardest match Gassiev has had to date. Right? Just understand that Denis Lebedev isn't the boxer that Alexander Usyk is. Right? Simply put, if both of these guys bring their A game, I'm expecting Usyk to outbox Gassiev. Right? Because the odds makers have made this fight a toss up, and because our goal is to get a profit. And because the fight is competitive, because it is close, because it's in Moscow where Gassiev has fought before and Usyk hasn't. Right? My theory on the fight is that for Gassiev to win, he's going to have to close the show. He's going to have to do that by knockout early. If he doesn't, and this fight lingers into the later rounds, I'm expecting Usyk to take over. So the bet I'm recommending is a plus 270. Right? Why? Why seek out a plus 270? Because we're seeking out profits. A plus 270 on the under. Nine and a half rounds. That gives you the win of either guy closes the show in the first nine and a half rounds. Hedged with Usyk simply to win the fight. So if Usyk gets a stoppage in the first nine and a half rounds, folks, you're in the penthouse. You've won both halves of the bet. If it makes it into the later rounds and Usyk wins a decision or gets a late stoppage, folks, that's great too. You'll make money there too. If you structure the bet the right way, take some of the expected winnings, or possible winnings, we'll call it, on the plus 270 portion of the bet, and transfer that to your bet on Usyk, simply to win. But let me be clear here. If Gassiev fights a great fight, hurts Usyk, slows him down, and stops him after the midway point of the 10th round, right? Full nine and a half. You lose it. If this fight goes to a decision and Usyk wins the decision, whether it's a close decision or a wide decision, you lose it all, right? Think this through. 
Let me also say this too, for those of you in love with the heavyweight division, as I am, right? You know my basic theory on boxing. There's a heavyweight champion, and then there's everyone else, right? I want you to look at this fight and think about the heavyweight division. I believe in this flat-footed, low-volume era, both of these guys and Maris Breedis, who just gave Usyk all he could handle in Usyk's last fight, right? I believe all three of these guys might be too much for not just Joshua, not just Wilder, but also Manuel Char, who Maris Breedis has already beaten by knockout. Look that one up, right? The cruiserweight division is overloaded right now, right? Even Dordikos, who just lost to Gassiev, is an excellent fighter, right? This is one of the most talented divisions in boxing. Because I believe the guys are too big for cruiser, right? Usyk, Gassiev, they're both 6'2 and up. As you get older, your body gains weight, right? Usyk's 31 years old already. I believe these guys eventually are going to have to leave the 200-pound weight class and fight as heavyweights. As we've seen, Tony Bellew, who's a former cruiserweight champion, do successfully in two fights against David Hay. Right? So keep an eye on this fight with other divisions in mind. It's a great fight the way I'm playing it. Is I'm taking the under nine and a half rounds hedged with Alexander Usyk simply to win. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.